webbing. What to do with it. I'll show you how to fold it in what's called a beaver tail. Hi, it's Timothy Alston with 9533 Training Consulting. I'm going to talk about one of those things that we don't really think about when we put our gear bags together, uh, whether it's an e and &E kit, uh, get out a Dodge bag, uh, breakout bag, uh, off the grid bag, is what do we put in it? Uh, and one of the things I found that is definitely a guaranteed 100% needed item is webbing. Webbing allows us to do many different things from we can build harnesses, we can build anchors, we can lift people with it. There's so many things we can do with it, but people don't know how to store it. And what I'm gonna talk about today is how to basically store your webbing in what's called a beaver tail. A beaver tail is just basically a macrame stitch on stitching your webbing together so that it's easy to maintain and hold. This is an example of two pieces of webbing I have hooked up to a carabiner and it's stowed. Uh, I can throw this on my gear bag, I can throw it on my belt, I can throw it just about and clip it to anything and it's ready to go and it breaks away instantaneously and easily. You've got different ways of storing your gear. You can store it in a coil, you can put it in just loose. You can just throw it in your bag. Uh, but I found that this is probably one of the easiest ways to do it and it takes a very large piece of webbing and compacts it. So as an example, this is uh, about 18 feet of webbing. Uh, this is the finished product of your beaver tail. And the way we can break this apart is once we release the two main parts of it, uh, because it does stitch its way together, and I'll show you how we do that, it just comes apart with a pull. And this is all of the webbing. Uh, if you were to follow the one stitch, one line of the webbing, you can see that it is about 18 to 20 feet. That's uh, somewhere in there. Um, and what we can do. Now, you could throw this in your bag if you want. Um, for those that have uh, worked with rope or stuff that you do not store correctly, you're going to find out it's very hard to get apart. Uh, when I was uh, an armorer on my first ship, uh, I used to, we used to refuel, I was in an oiler, and we used to refuel other ships, and we have what's called shot line, and we used to shoot this rubber pellet uh, from ship to ship, and then they would use that to pull a rope and a cable back and forth and then pull over the fuel lines. And with that, we would get back the line, it was orange, and it would look like this. So picture this as being 300 yards, a very fine, kind of like a little thinner than a, a 550 cord. Uh, and we'd have this machine that you had to hand crank and it would roll it all back together, but you had to untangle that. And that was part of my job. And if we were doing a big operation when I was in the Gulf the first time and back in the early 90s, 91, uh, we could refuel and be out operating with six ships. And if you missed, guess what? New roll. So I would be doing 12, 14 rolls of these and putting them back together. Uh, and so this is just basically a way to store just like we had to store our shot line back then. Once again, you break the two uh, first pieces and it comes right apart. So let me go ahead and show you how we can go ahead and put together the beaver tail so that you can store your webbing and have it ready to go whenever you need it. All right, so what you can see is I've got basically uh, the loose webbing here and we're gonna go over how to put this together. So this is just basically black webbing I've got some blue stitch on one side solid black on the other It just allows me to be able to see the sides and I'm gonna keep the blue side out So I'm gonna find both ends and you want to go ahead and keep it flat. So as you are Basically laying this out. Let's make sure that we don't have it roll uh, If it does it's gonna cause a problem when you're starting to put together your beaver tail. Here's one end and now I want to go back and find the center again. I'm going to hold these two pieces together. What I like to do is I like to put my finger in between. This way I can actually feel when it starts to roll. And if there's any problems, I can go in and fix it then. All right, there's our center. And then I want to find our center again. So I'm going to put these two pieces together, holding them again. And I'm going to slide down. Now this time, I don't need to hold on to this end because I want to find the center. So I'm just going to keep following it. 
And as I do it, I'm going to basically just feed it a little bit at a time so I can get to that end that I need. I just want to keep all of this together. And here we go. Almost there. Okay, so here comes our end. And let's get out the tangles. There we go. Out of our tangles. All right, so here is our end. Now, I don't need all four pieces of this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put basically, uh, you know, when you tie your shoes, you put an overhand knot in. But if I take all four of these strands and I put an overhand knot in it, it's not going to work because I need a part that's going to actually slide. I need a loose end and a locking end. So here's our middle again. So I'm going to separate these. Here's my middle. And then from here, I'm just going to put an overhand knot in. Now this overhand knot is going to slip. So I'm going to slip side and a locking side. All right. So right here, always dress your knots. So let's make sure that this is nice and flat. So it's smooth. Now what I have is I have a slip side and a locking side. All right. And what I'm going to do to build this um, beaver tail is I'm always going to be feeding in the locking side, not the slip side. Slip side is what's going to tighten it down as I go. So I'm going to take the locking side. Now you can go under like this, or you can go over. It's entirely your choice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take from the bottom here and I'm going to turn and feed it through. If you stay consistent with your way all the way through it, it'll make an even pattern. So once it's come through, here's my, here's my slip side. I'm going to pull it and pull it tight. So as I pull this tight, it's going to go ahead and get everything to stay nice and together. All right. Now, here's my slip side right here. Here's my locking side. I'm going to turn it over so I can stay consistent. I'm going to have my locking side coming in from the right hand side. So it's always going to be the same. Pull that through. Pull it down nice and tight. Now, the tighter you make it, the tighter the stitch is going to be. And you want to remember that. So once again, here's my locking side. I'm going to flip it over, feed it from the right side. Now, you don't have to do that. Is it required? No, it's not. You can do whatever you want. Ah, nice and tight, nice and tight. Flip it over. Make sure I've got enough of a loop there to work with. Now you can see as I'm building this, I'm starting to build that macrame stitch. That stitch is what I want. All right, flip it over again, feed it in, and pull it tight. Oops, not twisted. It didn't go right. There we go. You can see it as you start to do this more. It's actually a very quick process, but you can see if you twisted something the wrong way. I could see that this stitch right here was actually a little bit backwards. Uh, it twisted the wrong way. So I just want to fix that just to keep it symmetry. And I guess a little bit of that OCD kicking in. All right, nice and tight. Now you see how we're starting to build the beaver tail. It's a very, very simple way to do it. Feeding in from the right. Feeding in from the right. And feeding it from the right. Now we're getting close to the end. When we get close to the end, we are going to want to start to think about how we're going to finish this. Okay. Because we want it to lock together. So now look, I've got a very small pieces left. So I'm going to feed this through. Now, am I going to be able to feed the, this tail back through? No, I'm not. It's not going to work. So I'm going to pull this all the way through, lock it down. Now, what do I have? I've got a loop. To attach my carabiner to. This is how I can run with this. Now it looks like there's probably enough to make another loop. There really isn't. I can tell just by looking at it. It's not going to be enough. So if I were to come through, uh, where's my, oh, I fed this all the way through. So if I were to try, it's going to be tight. I barely got enough. Yeah, there's not enough to do it. There's not enough. All right, so 
There's my finished product. So when you're thinking about doing, having some webbing and thinking about how to put it together, this is something I suggest. It's a beaver tail, very simple. It doesn't matter how much webbing you have, you can stitch it together. You can see it's a very tight stitch. I can't pull it apart. Try and flex it, it's not gonna come apart. It's a tight stitch. Uh, it's gonna stay together, it's not gonna fall apart, and it'll be ready for you to deploy at any time. Putting together your webbing in a rather simple beaver tail can take your webbing from this to this so that it's ready, manageable, and you can use it whenever needed. If you have any other ways that you'd like to fold your webbing and you'd like for us to go ahead and put together a video about it, definitely let us know in the comments below and I'll look into and put in together a video on that style also. I'm not saying that this is the end all be all of anything, but I'm just saying that this is a way you can put your webbing together that is easy, compact, and it's ready to deploy at any time. As always, on time, on target, never quit. Hoo-yah.